champion this year, 20.73 this season. SMA of Cameroon, the second fastest qualifier, 20.44 seconds. African silver medalist over this distance this year. Lee Wants of St. Lucia, the 31-year-old, will start in lane number three. Again, just outside 21 seconds in this Commonwealth season. And Davian Skerritt of Antigua and Barbuda will start on the inside line in lane number two. 21-year-old making his Commonwealth Games debut here in Birmingham. So the first two guaranteed a place in tomorrow's final. Impressive running in the first semi-final from Zarnell Hughes. The current qualifiers by time. There you see them. Abbas of Pakistan leading the way with his third place finish at 20.89 seconds. Chameleon 6, SMA of Cameroon, the fastest qualifier for this semi final in lane 4. So another clean start and a roar from the fans here in Birmingham, the Nigerian going well in lane number 8. Jamili for England moving nicely in six. SMA from Cameroon going nicely in four. Just the top two guaranteed a place in the final. And the Nigerian's going to get this one. England's Adam Jamili fades back to about fourth. And 20.59 seconds, just under the legal allowable limit in terms of wind. You're now plus 2.0, and it was a 1.9. There was three or four athletes, Tim, involved in that one when they were coming off the bend, but the speed endurance of the two that were really expected to qualify from that semi-final pulled through in the end. Yes, Onru uh, Zuarike of uh, Nigeria. Very powerful, big fella, isn't he? In the 2059, he's only a youngster. Gosh, has he got some developments come? He's 19 years old. Clearly capable of going below 20 seconds very soon, if not this season, then next season. The semi-100 finalist, we expected him to go well. Good running for him from uh, lane four. And Jamili, well, it's, uh, he's fully, clearly not fully fit. There he is, fourth and left in the red and white of England. He is a sub-22nd man, 1997. He's done great things with Great Britain and in England Vest as well over the years, but he faded over the last 20, 30 metres, which used to be the strength of his running. Here he is in third place between the uh, first two, eventual first two. On Wuzurike on the outside there, rocking from side to side. Not the smoothest of sprinters, but my words, they cover the ground well. And uh, Esemi, very comfortable there in lane four. The rest of them quite some way back, Kat. Yep, there's the photo finish. On Wuzurike, though, the 19-year-old, coached by his father. Well, I presume his dad's going to be happy with that one because the Nigerian won his semi-final here in Birmingham, 20.59 seconds. St. Hilaire of Trinidad and Tobago was third at 20.95. Here's confirmation then of that result. The two big cues for Nigeria and Cameroon. There's still Abbas of Pakistan with his 20.89 is leading the way. And St. Hilaire, I don't think that's going to be good enough for a non-automatic qualifying spot with one more semi-final to go well we can go back to this shot foot first round and uh, Jacko Gill he's eighth ninth in the throwing order seventh at the world championships Jacko Gill he's uh, used to making the top ten in major global championships what can he do here he's seen his compatriot uh, Tommy Walsh pump his first one out to 21 98 and that's very solid from Jacko Gill a long way beyond 20 meters I don't know if he's hurt his hand on release there. Still baby-faced, isn't he? It's uh, fitting because he holds all sorts of age group records when he was 15, 16, 17. He was pumping out uh, the appropriate size shot put at those age categories way, way beyond world records. 2048, really solid opener from Jack O'Gill, and he is in second place. Good to see the New Zealanders performing so well, Tim. And Jack O'Gill's had a few years away from the spotlight. There was so much expectation on him when he was winning those back-to-back -back World Junior titles and breaking all those records. And then Walsh 
has come to the fore and really been the main man for New Zealand for the last decade or so. Well, he has, yeah. He's been up there tussling with the top three or four in the world on the Diamond League circuit and major championships for many years, Tommy Walsh. He's still only 30 years old, but that's another great heave from him. Not as far as his first effort, which was less than an inch shy of the 22-metre line. That's about 21 and a half there from Tommy Walsh and immediately does a critique of his own effort. Well, works three days a week as a builder in Christchurch. I bet he can carry some bricks, if that indeed is his uh, role. His father was a rugby player, started throwing the discus at age seven. He was a good hockey player and cricket player, multi-talented. Right, gums. Round two, opened with 17-18. Uh, He's down in eighth place. Remember, they all get three throws, and then the top eight will get three further throws from this 12-man field. That second round uh, throw from Tommy Walsh, by the way, 21-46. So he has by far the two best throws so far. And that's uh, frustrating for the British Virgin Islands athlete, Gimon Gums. No improvement. Big South African getting ready. Gums indeed disappointed with that. Good for the British Virgin Islands to have two men in this final. The two New Zealanders as well. Crowd very much looking forward to the climax of the shot put and this third semi-final of the 200 metres. Yes, the eight athletes out there. There they are. Buntin, Bangura, Matsenjwa. Jareem Richards of Trinidad and Tobago. The defending champion goes in lane five. Yang Gao. Amoa, Edwin and Ojeli of Nigeria out in lane nine. Well, there is uh, Emmanuel Efeanyi Ojeli, third in his seat in 21.12 with the following wins. He's a 20.7 performer at his absolute best. How is the bat well for Nigeria in the long relay? Delan Edwin of St. Lucia, 21.19 in his heat yesterday. 20.66 is his lifetime best this year. In seven, the Ghanaian, Joseph Amoa. Semi-finalist in the last Commonwealth Games, but he did win his heat here, 20.58, and that's a nice lane draw. Lane seven. Mike Makamba Nyangao goes in lane six. Without his heat uh, four years ago, but he has improved. He's a 20.38 performer at his best. Dream Richards, well, went down his heat back in 2014, but he's a much better runner now. Tokyo Olympic finalist, sixth in Eugene a couple of weeks back. And that's a lovely rain draw for the Trinidad and Tobago defending champion in five. This is Subusiso Masenjwa. Gomez Watini went down his heat in Eugene, Oregon. Set a national record in, at the Tokyo Olympics of 20.22. Watch him. Ibrahim Bangura went down the heat to the 100 here. Dale Buntin of uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. Not far off his season's best in his heat with 21.22. So just a quick reminder, it is only the first two who go through by oh, right, no, the two fastest uh, or non-automatic qualifiers from these heats, three semi-finals I should say, and at the moment, 2089 by Abbas of Pakistan is the quickest non-automatic qualifier, and Carl Grove, Trinidad and Tobago, 2091, so we can confirm that Adam Jamili will not make the final, Dwight San Hilaire of Trinidad and Tobago, likewise. But the defending champion, Jareem Richards, there he is in lane five. Very similar in the way he runs to Zarnell Hughes. Long and lean and a beautiful mover. Watch him. Set. So where they go, good start from Jareem Richards in five. He's already up on the man outside of Nyango of Kenya. Also going well in uh, four is uh, Eswatin, is Masenjwa. But uh, it is Jamaican, the Ghanaian rather, Joseph Amoa, semi-finalist. Four years ago, who gets a very comfortable second place. They're easing back behind the mighty, impressive Dream Richards. And he's happy with that. 20.40. Didn't have to overextend himself. Not quite as quick as Zarnell Hughes' 20.32. But uh, untroubled qualifying for the final. Final is uh, tomorrow. And he uh, looks very happy with that, as indeed, and rightly so, does Joseph Amoa. Amoa there. Well... Uh, time just waiting for that to be confirmed and 
League factor. 2051 for Amoa. Season's best from Matsenjwa in that third place. And the athlete from Eswatini will be in the final, along with Abbas, who makes it through, just denying the fourth finishing Kenyan here, the other non-automatic spot. I'll tell you what, though, Jareem Richards looks exactly as smooth as Zarnell Hughes. Great running by Armoa. He's the world indoor champion over the 400 metres. He, he got a bronze in London five years ago over the 200. Hughes against Richards, just as it was on the Gold Coast when there was nothing to separate them and it ended up being a disqualification for Hughes. The rerun of the... That, that reversal there gets him points and now he's bronze medalist alongside George Ram, a second bronze medal for England today. Bronze for the man from just up the road. Well, it was always going to come out. Oh, it was all systems go. It was pumped up because of the crowd. Look at him, look. He can't get off there fast enough, and uh, he couldn't get on there fast enough either. Cursory shake of the hand for his opponents, 44-year-old Kensley Marie. All English squad up there just uh, smiling at him and his reaction. Here we go. Just pulls the head down right the way round there. The uh, reversal was perfect. Then a straight onto the legs there. And he just forces him onto his back. Literally forces him onto his back. Actually, the worst thing that he could have done there, uh, Marie, um, was grab the head. So it enabled him to force him back there. And look at the shoulders there. Both shoulders cleanly on the mat and gets the pin. Delight for England, delight for Wolverhampton. High fives for the fans. Seventy percent of the officials here are all uh, all ladies. First time it's ever been that percentage. Mohit Greval, who lost to Ahmad Dizzy, another Indian, but fighting, he's a Punjabi, but fighting under the Canadian flag. But let us focus first on Aaron Johnson. studying information technology sciences and also fighting in the American University system for the Cumberland Patriots Mohit Greval making his Commonwealth Games debut silver in the senior national championships last year Bronze in the Junior Asian Championships four years ago. Had a knee injury in 2019-2020, as you mentioned earlier, Neil. Knees are, uh, well, quite often the uh, where it all comes apart for uh, people in combat sports. But uh, Grevel here looking fit and raring to go. Yeah, he was. a favourite for this. Well, he went up those stairs pretty uh, sharpish. And look at that, straight into the attack there. And Johnson not having any of it. Well, one point uh, straight away there for Gruel. For the single leg, I think. It's high school and university wrestling. It's a very big sport in the United States, and so that's where... Aaron Johnson has gone to ply his trade, getting a scholarship. Yeah, so far he hasn't uh, he hasn't even 
attempted anything on Gruel. It was just a matter of time here before Gruel does the uh, big move here. You can hear the Indian fans in the crowd shouting, more hit, more hit. Referee Lee giving a first warning to Aaron Johnson. Look for a pass in a minute, he'll uh, just try and pull him in in order to slip round there, Grill. Here it comes, the underhook then, and uh, now he's going to try and uh, just force him to the edge. Just manages to stay in. So again, just saying, more action. I'm really surprised he hasn't gone on the clock yet, uh, Johnson. Yes, it's going to happen any, any second now, you would have thought. Yeah, long time, isn't it, between the first. There's single leg there, and uh, he's going to get a point for that. Just chases him out the area. Rival content to get them in singles at the moment, because there's not a lot else he can do. He's actually got a warning uh, uh, up there, Johnson. So, uh, only have three of those. Another point has gone against him. So as the clock ticks down on the first round. There goes another point. It's all that Mohit Greval can really do at the moment, but he, he is doing it. Just doing enough. It's, it's almost like he's having a little amble through this, but... Um, you can only fight the opponent that you've got against you. you can yeah, I, I, we like to see it opening up because if, if one or both of them start attacking, then it leaves it open. It, it, it's what we call an open match. And we saw a couple of uh, tactical ones, didn't we, there, you know, that uh, have been really, really tight. Almost gave his back there. He wasn't far off, was he? But uh, did something that uh, the referee didn't like. These are the uh, one pointers single and double leg attempts there and driving uh, Johnson out of the area. Well, 30 seconds went pretty pretty quick, didn't it? Yes, let's see how quickly the final three minutes go. Is Greval going to be able to open it up? Perhaps the fact that he's four points to the good will mean that he can maybe venture a few more moves but Johnson not giving him a lot to get his teeth into Johnson of course needs to turn things around single leg again now then can he drive him out yeah he's taken advantage now two points and now he gets the pin and he gets it it's all over Mohit Greval with bronze for India and you have to that he was the only one making the running Johnson knew that he can only really win it on defence and you can't win medals with just defence, you have to win it with attack. Yeah, and he kind of went for it as well, Johnson. He thought, well, this is the last kind of effort I've got here. So tried the uh, turnover, but uh, sacrificed his back and his back was uh, on the floor and Gruel took advantage. Look how he tries here to uh, turn him over, sacrifices his back there. Gruel just uh, whips the arm in and then drives him onto his back there. And he's kind of given up by this time. Look how both shoulders there hit the ground and uh, it's all job done. That's a single leg that uh, starts it off. And there's the follow through, good follow through, good connection. 
and another medal for india.